Jesus. I'm proud of SR1 up on the name, you know, Paco. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a rapper, artist, all kind of things, but we'll go with that. Like I said, today we're going to be talking pain. Mm. Um, in your music, you tend to touch upon the subjects that pain rather subtly. One of my favourite lines where you mention pain is numb to the pain. It's like my heart's for the normal king. Yeah, that's a good line. Wasn't it's a good line, that? still. It's a good line. But good obviously... Line. <laughs> I know, that's a scar for life. Scar for life. Yeah, that's okay. right. So it seems like it's pretty much embedded in the way you rap and the essence of your rap. Yeah, your word. So you see that part specifically? Could you break that down for me? Um, <laughs> Novocaine is like a numbing agent, isn't it? So mm. it's like... But that, that that one there to break it down in simple form is basically like usually when you go through things they say like your heart like it's heavy on your heart or your heart those are saying your heart's bleeding so it's like I'm just saying that after everything I've been through, been through it's like I could take some more pain it doesn't really affect me mm. type of thing like yeah and one question we have to ask all the guests when they come on the show is how would you define the word pain? Depends what one you're talking about. Cause there's physical and then right. there's like emotional. So what one are you talking about? In the most general way, how do you define it? Um, it's like a, it's a, I would say it's like an irritating feeling. Right. Like a continu a consistent irritating feeling. No so matter. Sense. Because if you're in physical pain, it's it's gonna irritate. Like say you had like a back pain. Like right now I'm sitting up, sitting down, so yeah. and I might be comfortable. But as soon as I go to stand up, I'm gonna be reminded, oh yeah, your 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 back is on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Um so like even if we're talking emotionally, like let's just use something simple like getting over something or something. That I don't I mean, that feeling everyone has it, no one could explain what that feeling is. Like when your heart is, it, as they say, you got a heavy heart or something like that. So it's like that's a it's, a, it's irritating. Like you just be watching, um, like whatever you're watching. Let's say you're watching a podcast or something or an interview, and then that thought of whatever you lost or whoever's gone is is weighing down. This is it's, it's, it's unexplainable, but we all feel it. But yeah. it's irritating though because it just messes with your whole. What you got going on? Now, obviously, you say irritating. Mm. And it's kind of got negative connotations to it. But as a whole, would you attach pain to a certain negative or would you, would you say it's positive as it's well? It's a good question because it's healing, isn't it, sometimes, isn't it? But it's like, like if you're trying to get over something, like, for example, if you had a car accident and you broke your arm, the fact that it's in a car so is a constant reminder, like, yo, my arm's broken. So that's just irritating you. And that, that's what I feel. And... Obviously, it's like, if you've lost somebody, like, for example, like, that, that stuff be weighing on me, it's like, it's irritating that they're not here, or, you know what I'm trying to say? Or you got to think of them in that way, or you got to think about, oh, if they was here, you know no one's there, like, or just seeing a picture or seeing something that reminds you of that person, like, to bring back that emotions, it could be at the wrong time, you know what I'm trying to say? Well, there's never really no wrong or right time, but like even on this interview, like if you spoke to me about certain things, and obviously I've spoken about it elsewhere, like even in my personal time, but it like it would like piss me off if I that like, broke down because mm -hmm. I don't want I just want to do the interview. You know what I'm trying to say? So yeah, that's what that's why I don't want to say pain is negative, but yes, yeah, it's it's there. Uh, I don't know. I don't I don't know if it's positive, but I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say it's a good thing, you know, you know what I mean? I think that's definitely an interesting perspective you yeah. have on it, especially, like, identifying it as something that's irritating. Yeah. Never really thought about it like that. But, um, without going into too much detail, could you tell us about a painful experience that you've had to deal with? <laughs> Where do I start? <laughs> um, I think the most effective, the most effective painful situation I've had is, like, losing... Just losing people, losing the man, them, losing family, you know what I'm trying to say? And one of my most um, painful situations was um, when one of my brethren um, died, you feel what I'm trying to say? Well, he got killed, to be honest. And, like, 
I vividly remember it because he used to be at my yard and shit like that a lot. Yeah, me live with man basically. But I was in jail when it happened, obviously. Well, not obviously, but at the time when it happened. And obviously, I remember like chatting to my mum. Like, I had to phone my mum, innit? Like, obviously, I'm in my cell, I got a phone, whatever. I phoned my mum because she actually knows knows um, knows um my bedroom, obviously, because I used to live with my soul. Her being upset, like, or like, because her exact words was like, I don't want nothing like this to happen to you. So she broke down because she know, yeah. So that was a, that was a mad, yeah. That was one of my most, you feel me? That was one of my most moments, most notable moments in, in, in my life still. Because that's the first time I even had a conversation where my mum is like, you know, like basically crying to me or like, you get you feel me? So, and I had to do with that in a cell, you get me? And then it made me think, like, ah, oh, like, bro, like, lost my bridge. And, 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 like, you get me? Like, when my bridge had passed, like, he probably wouldn't even think that my, that would make my mum cry. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because he ain't, we ain't looking at it like that. Like, we ain't looking at, when you go to your bridge's house, you ain't think, like, oh, what does his mum, how much does his mum think of me or whatever? You know what I'm trying to say? So, yeah. Yeah, that was that was one of, that was a struggle moment for me. You get me? How would you say that 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 specific event affected you mentally, emotionally, and physically? Especially the fact that you was in a cell at the time. Um. Well, physically, like yeah, man, that was a, that was one of one of few times that man dropped tears in jail. So physically, man cried that one out a little bit. We said men mentally. It's like, those is men that men went to school with, you know what I'm trying to say? So it's like, it's like it's weird. Like, it's just a weird thing that certain men ain't here, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's actually, it's actually too weird. But well, it's just like, yeah, so mentally it's hard to just fathom people have just disappeared. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like, yeah, man, man didn't go to no funerals or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it was just hard to kind of, like, man was forced to accept it. So mentally, I just started, like, it made, it took a toll on me still. Because mm. it just made me know that, yeah, like... And the way it even happened, it was one of them ones that, like, had to relate back to something to do with man's faith to, for that one day. You know, the one day, and just make sense of it, you get me? So, yeah, mentally, that brought me closer to understanding that, yo, you get me? Death is promised, like, that, that, like, that one day. Mm. Emotionally, I don't really know, man. Like, it was just, yeah, it just, yeah, just let, let man, yeah, emotion, just let man in touch with certain emotions that I never even knew I had. You see what I'm saying? So it's just like, like I said, that conversation with my mum, it just brought man, like, yo, like, it made me understand, like, like, like yo, like, I gotta love my mum, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and there's people out here that love you, you know, the ones there basically. So emotionally, that it made it, it's like a, almost like a bit of sweet thing, because at the same time, it brought a sense of warmth, because it's like my mum is letting me know, like, yo, like, if something like this happened to you, like, I'll, you get what I'm trying to say? Mm. So, yeah, it made me tap into some emotions that I never even knew I had still, I can't lie. Would you say that it kind of, put things into perspective for you in a way that kind of just showed reality to you like a wake up shot yeah yeah but man's had multiple of them mm. you know what I'm saying it's like, it's like rinse and repeat the same story you don't know what's there so it put man to the perspective of um, like faith wise because I don't know if it's um, Allah wise if that means Allah knows best in it but um, I don't know whether it's in the Quran or it's a hadith I don't know but I know the story basically it's like there's a prophet, yeah, peace be upon them. Basically, they they met the angel of death. Basically, the angel of death has basically approached them, right? And cut a long story short, they basically said, "No, I'm not. I'm not dying today." Like it was that he had that much power, so he told the man, "Man, yo, I'm not dying." Then he'll fly quay to like let's say he went from Peckham to I don't know to Thamesmead. And then he, the angel of death met him there, like, yo, what you said? And he's like, nah, I told you, I'm not dying today. Then he went to Hackney. Then he went to Ross Clark, Oxford. 
But everywhere he's gone, the angel of death has followed him. You understand? So the moral of the story is when he got to the final spot, the angel of death said, here's what you, again, like, you're going to die. Like, he said, no, he said to him, your time is your time, basically. And I needed you to run away to this spot before I actually take your soul away. You understand what I'm trying to say? So all of that running away was basically a part of the bigger plan. So if I didn't approach you in Peckham, you would have said, let me move to Thamesmead. Let me move to... I had to get you in this spot because it's written for you to go here. You understand what I'm trying to say? So the reason why that got put in perspective that made me understand that raw that it could be a man that's not in no drama at all but just rolling with x y and z and going to a b and c and doing one two three you're gonna go in it there's no way to escape that so and that's promised to everyone you feel me so in that time there it's like it just made yeah put into perspective like there's no it don't matter, you, uh, you get me, my, my brother that passed, he had a lot of peas, he was doing this thing, you get me, but it just went to show me that all of that didn't matter, you feel me, like he got it for real though, you know what I mean, yeah, he was a man that was just about the bread kind of thing, so it's like, he weren't even, this weren't really him at the time, he's just getting bread, but the one people that he would have put his life on the line for you understand what I'm trying to say like it actually happened and you know what I mean? but if someone else do you know what I mean like and these people more time don't even draw him out if that makes sense you follow me mm. so the fact that the only people that could have made you rise up and get on the street for it actually happened mm. it just strength from my belief in that right like you know like there's no escaping this stuff so it's inevitable you, it's inevitable yeah. Yeah, yeah. If it, how it has to happen is how it's going to happen mm -hmm. so yeah it just made me just you know just think to move more righteously if that makes sense so would you say that in that way he was kind of able to learn from someone else's pain yeah 100% yeah. 100% and that's and that's the thing about this life you know a lot of tragedies happen and people see them as tragedies and that like, like but to me it's a blessing in disguise because that's for us who's still here, whatever may happen. Like, if you, if you see someone, like, not dead, but, like, crash a motorbike because they tried to do a wheelie, you're going to know that's not for... Do you get what I'm trying to say? So other people's tragedies is for us to understand. Get healthier, do this, do that. Even though it's inevitable, but you just never know. We look left and right, simple things, you know? Would you say that you use your music as an outlet for that pain? Yeah, 100% I use the music as an outlet. 1,000%. Like, but you know what's so mad? When you do it, it's like you don't even realise that people are going to relate. This is just some real shit to you, you know what I'm saying? So you just put it out, like... But then you don't really... It's so only you listen to it back. Like, when you repeat it a bar to me, I'm like, oh, like... Yeah, I wrote that. I did say that. You know what I'm saying? There's even another one. Niggas rocking gold chains just to cover your pain. Oh, that's... um. Don't say it. Uh, I know that. Um, don't say it. Just don't say it. Street tunes. That's one of my favorite tunes. On me. That's on me. Mm. That's what I was crazy. But I, I knew the, the song, but I couldn't remember what I called it. Yeah, that's on me. That's one of my favorite songs as well. If you could read that one down for us as well. Yeah, you know, like when you're coming from the ends and that, like those things have been told to us that not even told to us. It's just shown, like, like for example, like you might catch a dirty. Brother, like, he's just, like, let's say he stinks or something. But, like, everyone's like, oh, he stinks, he stinks. And that's, that's the word in the end, he stinks. But, let him go get some bread and put on a, a Cuban. Like, people gonna forget that he smells, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, that, that's just how it is. Like, you see, I've seen it, I've seen guys that wasn't nothing get a whip and then all of a sudden get out of just on them. Like, like literally like <laughs> a year ago, like this guy was no one. You see what I'm saying? So you ain't really fixed the it like so so back to the point, if you stuck, like that ain't really fixing the issue. Like the, you know what I mean? Just covering. You're just covering it up. Yeah, yeah. Like you get me? So you might be insecure, but this little change bringing you a little notoriety, people like, yo, you see my man's like, but really or like you could even be broke. 
But you use somehow, you could even rub the chain. No one doesn't even know how you got the chain. You see what I'm trying to say? Like you could be going for real shit and then like just go rub a chain and start wearing it. And then like on the outside, everything, see, everyone thinks you're up. You see what I'm saying? So them type of things, obviously not everyone, but them material things are cover up a lot of the times of what's really going on. It's the reality of the store. Feel me? Not a lot of men could do shit without certain things. Without having an attraction or something that attracts people, you know? So how important would you say it is for you to kind of lock in with those painful emotions when rapping or just rapping? Or in life in general or just anything? Specific to your music. Oh, to the music. Um, yeah. yeah, because I like to make relatable music, innit? I like to, like, my story is, 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 is got unique parts, but it's not a unheard of story. Like, it's not unheard of that. People end up in the streets, go to jail, boom, bam, bam, you yeah, get and that's who it's for, really, isn't it, I guess. Would you ever say it's kind of difficult to kind of lock in with those emotions in the right because you kind of have to relive those emotions? Nah, not me, because I'm I'm, accept, I'm accepting of what has happened, isn't it? So, whether I go back to days when I was in a trap, days when the man had a bad night, we got ran down, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, all of it is... I've, I've accepted all of it. Other people, I understand why not. Some people might not want to relive, the, relive their moments, but, you know, it just if you don't, that's the thing, if you don't tap into all their moments, you're not going to find out who you are because all of their moments there created you how you are. You need to, that, 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 that makes you be self-aware. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember being in jail and I thought, why did I get, why am I here? You know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking, why am I here? Not like the crime, because I know the crime. I know why I'm here. You know what I'm saying? But I actually have to say to myself, why am I? Like, what did I do to even get involved in this type of... And that was a, those type of things there was hard because you have to find that accountability in that as well. And no one wants to really hold their self accountable. But that shit sets you free from. But then there's certain things that happen to people that uh, is out of their control. Like, you might be young and getting abused or rare, tear, 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 you know? So I can understand why some people might want to relive that because they might not get the answer when they ask, why me? You know what I'm trying to say? So that's just a different sort of thing. But for me, yeah, I had to, I had to go over all them painful moments man, and, and, and realise that, yo... You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm accepting of, that's why I'm accepting of my when I even got birded, you know what I'm trying to say? Like I didn't it was cool. It's kind of like finding closure with Yeah, because it was just like I was like, well, this is what if I didn't look back on my moments when I was running up and down, enjoying the life I was living, yeah, and cutting myself up, getting police onto me, you know what I'm saying? I would have ever been able to accept my bird, because I would have feel like why am I getting, why are you not burdening me? Why are you not saying this to me? I'm, I'm being hard done by it. You know what I'm saying? Not to say I wasn't, but saying, you want to be a G, you want to be out here, this is what it comes with. When you got to be in the court and the judge is saying, boom, bam, 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 bam. You got to be up, you got to understand. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you think that's something that a lot of people don't really understand that in order to kind of get over the pain, you have to kind of confront it. Yeah, you have to confront it 100%. Yeah. But for me, I was... I wouldn't even say I was forced because a lot of men go to jail not even... But I used to look at that door and think, yo, not every night, but... I've, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Like, I used to be like, yo, like, I'm really here. Mm. Like, or everyone everyone has that experience where, you know, you go sleep in jail, you have a dream, but you're outside. Mm. See, when you wake up, fam, and you realise you're inside, it's so devastating, fam. Like, because it's literally like a door, like, with no handle. And it's just there. Like, as soon as you open, you're like, bam, oh, shit. Yeah. Fuck, man, I'm locked up. You know what I'm saying? And it's not like I'm coming out tomorrow, next week, next month, not even next year. You know what I'm trying to say? This is the real, this is where it gets real, though. Mm. Being on the streets is self-inflicted, you know what I mean? It's self-inflicted pain, really, and truly. You're putting yourself in situations for whatever the reason may be. Whether you might even be like, you know, because a lot of men come from my background. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's like you might feel like 
But there's always options. But the difference is we just didn't know at the time. It's not like now where there's so many social medias. Everyone's doing something every day. We literally had nothing. All we had, you come out, you go to school, you're influencing the school people or you're influenced by the block you're from. That is it. That's why I don't really understand these youths of today like now. Because this information is out there. Mm. Brother, we didn't have that. You understand the difference? When I was talking to you, I was in jail. I went to jail 18. Furthermore, I went to jail 17. You understand what I'm trying to say? I was out for three months. I went, so I was seven months in jail on my mom, beat the case, came out three months, and I got, and from three months later, I done eight and a half years. You understand? So I had to look back to them three, but that was a painful shit, I got back to jail. Even how I went back, even how, that was a painful situation. And that's what got me. A man break when it comes to the police and the to get me. But I was like, this is me. You know what I'm trying to say? But then when I look back at that three months and what I went to jail for, I'm like, right, like, that was all me as well. Like, that was me. I didn't have to do anything. Really and truly. Ooh, like, I'm telling you that you developed it's kind of telling in your music. Yeah. You often refer to yourself as like a soldier or a product of the trenches. Yeah. So aside from obviously going to war, soldiers are expected to kind of have that mental fortitude and, you know, just kind of be strong and like resilient to the situation that yeah. you're in. And we kind of see that in the project Purple Hearts. Yeah, yeah, word. That's what that means, really. Yeah. So would you say that that's something that you kind of have to develop yourself? And if so, was there any elaborate steps yeah. you have to take to do that? Yeah, like I said, um, Prior to all of this anyway, I've always been a leader anyway. That's just facts. Like the, the whole end knows that, whatever. Hey, when I go through what I went through, and I, like I said, I've done a lot of self-reflection. You know what I'm saying? So that's important as well. So when I reflected, it's like, yeah, that mentality was developed from the reflecting. You know what I'm saying? Because like I came, I got the answers of certain things. You, you, do, you, you see what I'm saying? So, yeah. But like I said, if you don't take time out to analyze your own situations, you will not come, you will not become self-aware. So you're not going to be able to develop anything. Mm. If you're just one of them people that wake up every day and just, you're on autopilot, oh, let's go to work, and you don't deep anything, how are you going to get a higher learning or understanding of what you're going through? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that is how you develop better, they call it critical thinking. You understand? Know like I'm a man that critical thing. Like I'm, I'm, like you probably wouldn't even know. Like, like I said, even as you arrive, I'm praying everyone. Bam, 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 bam. Like, do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, I'm already on trying to work out whose character is and where. I don't even have to look. You know, no one's there. I just look like man. I'm putting on his jacket. I'm on him. You know what I'm saying? That's just where it is. That's how I am. You feel me? But. I have to know that, that that's that's from some street shit or jail shit, but now it's like that's still a skill. Like, I, let me put it like this: nine times out of ten, yeah, you could go to a, a event, a, let's say a rave or whatever, like a party. Yeah, if you're in there, are you able to stand around and know when when it's tense? One hundred percent. Why is that? Because you're from cause you, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you know when you're in there now. See, this is the decision now. I stay here and act like my head's in the clouds. Oh, I don't know. Because certain people are in the room and they're just partying up. They don't know. One gunman over there, they got, it's about to go off. You understand what I'm trying to say? This is what, that's where that is, bro. You feel me? But there's some people that just won't even deep that. Like, so that's how you prevent certain things. And that's how, yeah, I like to live. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, them things that have developed from Yemi. Yeah, like you, it's, it will just come to you naturally, constantly yeah, learning true. from every every situation. Well, now this next question kind of relates to a song by Gigs, "Pain Is the Essence," which mm. is a big song in the project. You know, yeah, yeah, word, song. word. So just that that phrase, "Pain Is the Essence," what does that mean to you? The essence is the like the like the, 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 the mm. I think the, the main the ingredient, the source of what you're doing. So to me, "Pain Is the Essence" is just why I'm rapping about, or why I'm rapping about what I'm rapping about, and yeah, it's pain, isn't it? That's what he's basically saying, like, and then he breaks down, they both break down, him and Dubs, let's not forget Dubs, yeah, yeah, yeah. so they both basically break down, if you listen to the song, really, 
they both they basically break down going from like I don't think they even got to the richest, but I think Dubs is a bit on the richest side, but it's basically like a rise to riches, like and they're explaining painful situations that they the the You know what I'm saying? Like we invested in a couple draws. Like that sounds hard, but when you really think about it, like investing in a couple of draws is like, do you know do you know what level of the trap you're on if you're dealing draws? And there's four of you that's got to invest in that. Mm. Do you understand do you understand yeah. the pain you're do you get? It? Like like you feel me? I could have seen the future, I would have you know what I'm trying to say? Like this is all when you deep it though, you get it? And when you've been there now, you know what I'm saying? Like you're like, yo, now the truth is even realer. Like I said, I just even said, I've had a conversation with my mum about something happening to me in the future. So easy, Giggs is even saying in the song, like, if I could have seen the future, I would have saw me. In the you know what I'm trying to say? My mum, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? So he's, he's breaking it down. Like that's a whole painful situation. Me in jail, my mum, da 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 you get it? Then he even talked about the victim. No one was there. He said, I'm depressed that your mother saw a slug sitting in your... You feel what I'm trying to say? You get it? Like, it's that real. It's that real. Like, bro, like, man had to do the mad thing, but... Allegedly, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, man had to do the mad thing, but... Like, it's even hurting me that I had that, that... I had to put you, your parent through that shit. You understand? But I had to do it. You get it? Like, that's real shit. You feel what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Like, certain people don't think like that because there's certain man that... I'm not saying he did that. That's all I'm saying, but I'm just I'm saying, saying that. that. I'm saying yeah, that. No, I just want to get that clear, but I'm just <laughs> saying there's certain yeah. man that will do something crazy and not even think about anything. But even speaking of something like that, I've been in situations where, bro, there's man that's in jail, their life is, yeah? And a part of their, that course is in mediation. Bro, I know a man that's had to meet with their victim that who's died his parents and shit like that like um, yo like you feel me why did you do that to my son why did you do that to my daughter like do you get like this is it's real because that's another thing as well you don't I didn't, I didn't learn till later on in life that this little pastor that me and Tom got going on that Tom's got 10 aunties 5 uncles 5 sisters 20 cousins Grandma, grand, do you get what I'm trying to say? But I just know him on the streets. And this action I might do is going to take him away from all of that. You know no one there? Mm. But you don't, people don't even think about all that shit. You know how much people, like, like, bro, like, when you do something like that, bro, do you know how much energy is on you? Especially if they find out it's you. Mm. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, do you know how much people, are, your, your, your name is in how much mouse? You, do you know what pain you've... Directed to you. Huh? Huh? A lot of negative energy being... Oh, directed. okay then. Yeah. <laughs> so when you think, yo, why is my life just moving mad or whatever? I, I don't even believe in karma, but I just believe in... You know no one there. Like, if yeah. it, it, anything's possible with bad people, I just... You know no one's there. Yeah. Even just being on the roads and, and having fear. Like, when you're on the roads, and like 20... You can walk in a room and 20 people are... I mean, my man's in the building, and bro, do you know how much energy that is. You feel me? And how people speak of you when you're not around. Mm. Like, imagine bare people. Like, imagine even ten people every time you walk in the room. When you walk up, fuck, thank God he's gone. You know what I'm trying to say? Because of how you make them feel, fam. You know what I'm trying to say? They be praying on your downfall, bro. Walking back retrospectively mm. on just experiences that you've had to go through. What would you tell a younger tiny beast about the pain that he's experiencing? Bro, I was like, bro, <laughs> like, he's a fucking snake. He's a fucking idiot. You know what I'm saying? Like, this shit is not even worth what you're, you're not, you're going too hard for a game that doesn't, people ain't even playing the same like you. See what I'm saying? So what's it really worth? But if you really want to do it, just know the consequences. That's what I would say, because I, I understand it. I understand what it's like for people to, want to fight for their bridges 
uh, you get me? I, I understand the situation where, you know, you're living on the ends. Like, you hang here on a nice thing. Like, you're just calm. Like, whatever. You might be outside playing pound up, whatever. Yeah? This is your community. Because they like to throw that community word around these days. And I don't really know what that is. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because, like, it's not like how it was. Like, like, like I've got enough topic, but... When it was like that, it's a community, so you gotta be out here. This is where the youth clubs are, you get me? So I understand what it's like, the pressure, mm -hmm. even, to feel like, you get what I'm trying to say? But the consequences are the consequences. That's what I'm, that's what I'll tell you. It doesn't matter how you feel, really or truly. It doesn't matter that that's your brethren for 10 years and someone done something to him, and now you don't want to step about that. And it's a domestic situation. It's not no village. Where it's right, you know what I'm saying? The consequences, that's what I tell myself. The consequences for not being able to control your emotions and deal with your painful situation, the cause, it doesn't matter. The judge is going to say 30 years, bro. <laughs> the dirt's going to get thrown on your casket, bro. Or your, however you get me, I'm Muslim. You're going to get wrapped up in a sheet, bro. They're going to pray and then they're going to leave. That is the end of the story. Like, it doesn't matter how you dress it up, fam. Like, it, it, I've seen it. They're going to dump your body. Everyone's going to be there. They're even Snapchatting these days. They're even putting on drip to your funeral. These are true stories. They will drip to your funeral and Snapchat themselves with the shades on and the boots and the, the black, whatever. They're going to get black and they're going to drip out to your funeral and show themselves off, bro, on the day that you're getting buried, fam. That's what they're going to do. You understand what I'm saying? And then they're going to come and everyone's going to hear. Some people are even going to fake cry. They're going to cry. They're going to cry. They're going to say everything. That's it. I'm Muslim. And it says you should always go back to the, you know, mm. to the graveyard, the cemetery, to remind us. You get me? You know what I'm saying? Bro, some people die, bro. You're playing in these streets, bro. They get thought about once a year. I've been there, bro. I've all forgot. Well, not me personally, but like, you know, you just see something. It's like a birthday. Like, you know, every day it's someone's birthday. So you see it on someone else's snap. We all been there. Don't go like, oh, shit. Let me not even press the snap. Let me message them. But you get it. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, yo, happy birthday. And you're doing that shit like it's real genuine, though. Like, and they're like, yeah, thanks. But really and truly, if you didn't get that little clue, you would have been, you don't give a fuck. So what's this pain that you're going to go through really for? No, you're going to die and get life in this shit. Yeah, your mom's going to cry. You're going to, bro, no one's going to do shit. Your mom will struggle in the heads, bro. They won't even go to Tesco for her, fam. The same man you would have killed 10 men for. Your mum will cry for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, bro, every day. You understand? That's what I would tell myself. You get it? I now know what I know, that I'm not even cool with certain men on that type of level. It's like, bro, this is a man I would have done anything for. He probably feel the same, I don't know, whatever. But there we go with it. So we both come to the conclusion that we're not even each other's bridges. But at that time, bro, we was comfortable enough to say, yo, come and follow me to do this and do that. <laughs> what? Crazy and this is what I'm trying to say. This is the only way to think about it. Because this is the only thing that's going to make you make some smart fucking decisions. Half of the man them that I would even know. Some, some certain man I knew for three months, six months. There's men that meet each other in January and end up in other 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 case by July. You just met this guy. This is facts. It's real story. It's real. Six months, bro. Bro, certain man wouldn't even take a girl serious in six months. <laughs> These are facts. So about six months of friendship or rolling, you're willing to kill for this guy? Die for this guy? Do time for this guy? <laughs> expensive pain, my brother. <laughs> expensive pain, brother. Yeah. Like expenses are limited to fans. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Do you consider yourself a real rapper in terms of like the genre of music you make? When you say it's real rap. Yeah, I guess I feel under that category, but 
I want to branch out anyway, you know. Yeah. But I don't want to be under no label. I just want to let me. Yeah, but yeah, I get it. Right. It's just for lack of better words. Yeah. I want to be an artist nowadays. Like, I want to, you get me? All right, cool. I was going to ask how how would you describe the relationship between pain and real rap? But since you're saying artists and that, and that kind no, of No, because thing, pain is different. Like, like I love an R&B song, Slow yeah, Jump. You feel me? So. How would yeah. you describe the relationship between pain and just music music in general? This is an outlet, isn't it? Mm. It's, 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 it's one of the most... Because like I said, there are different types of pain. You can literally make a song about breaking your arm. Bro. And there's so much people that break their arm. Or you can say one line. You get me? And there's so much people that broke their arm. And I think that was so cold, what you just said. The relationship with pain and music is giving people something that, that can't like express it like that. I don't think there's no better music than, you get me? Even like heartbreak songs, I don't think there's no better music that moves you than pain music. Mm. Like, I get it, partying, that music's lit. But more time, more people stay at home crying and go party, isn't it? True. That's how I feel, man. That's the truth. Like, more people are going to go to a show and yo, I need to hear that signal. Or you're gonna get in their car and say, yo, run that run that tune there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For what they're going through. Just thinking that back to music again, you said you're a fan of R and B and that. Mm. But not just specific to R and B. What would you say is a tune that really puts you in mm. in 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 a feeling of pain? Like, oh I'm just feeling like, like you're really just going through the I'm trying to think of something like, like, like Ooh, ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah. I got a few. If you got a few, you can give us like the top three, man. I'm gonna try to give you one from um different um um like different genres. So like a R and B one would be like um you know someone called nine one one. Now you don't know that. Damn, you know what I'm, I'm putting you on Mary J. Blige or yeah. White Cliff. You don't know that. I know Mary J. Blige. I know White Cliff as well. Is it a song called 911? 911. Okay, I'm gonna look into that one. That's a real pain song. Fam. Yeah. Like, I, I, for my understanding, it's just like the love is too mad. Like, we need to call the police, basically. But it's mad. When you hear it, you get me. You understand. Yeah. I'm gonna play it to you before I leave. Say so no more. So, so yeah, that, that that's what there was. Like, ooh, dude, that guy crazy. You know what was there? But I get it. Like, it's mad. Um, rap, rap pain, rap pain. Oh, bro, it's too many, fam. But it's gotta be like a Styles. Yeah. The one that used to touch me. Um, there's my brother. Nah, yeah, that one there. But he's talking about his dead brother, you know what I was there? Yeah, that one's mad. My brother Styles. Um, what else is there? It's a pain for another uh, Styles, my brother, Mary J. Blige, White Clef 911. Um I think I think Cold Hearted One. First one. Oh yeah, yeah. Cold Hearted One. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. I was never oh how was yeah, yeah, that was yeah, yeah. So I'll give you that. Yeah, but Styles, my brother, yeah, that's a bro shit. So nine one one stars my brother and me. Yeah, those are yeah, those are definitely like the top ten in, in my top ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could go on. Cool, let's go to Ooh, little dirt though. Oh shit! Ooh, <laughs> oh, oh dirt though. Oh wee! Now dirt's got too many. Dirt's got too many. Man, you're a little pain, man. Still. Dirt's got too many. I don't even know where to start with that. But let me think. You know one tune that used to um, hit me though, um, Times, when he first came out. Damn. Times ain't the same no more. Oh, ain't gonna change no more. Yeah, that used to hit me still. I'm high of life. <laughs> but that probably ain't even one of the ones, but yeah, that, from old school, that, yeah, like Times and that. True Colors as well. Nah, I'm gonna say True, true Colors. Colors. Yeah, that True yeah, Colors. That one over Cold Hearted? Nah, hell nah. <laughs> I'm not heard it here first though. You get me? So now one one. My brother. Styles P. Styles P and then Meet Cold Heart. And honorable mention the true colours.
No, because I was just thinking about how, because that, it's not yes or no, isn't it? Mm. Is it okay to cry? Agreed. Ah. So, yeah, I might be playing English games with you. But. Yeah, you're trying to, yeah. So, right, yeah, but I'm just saying, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yes, it's, yeah yes, it's okay. I agree, it's okay to cry. Okay. Depending, it's actually, depending on where and who's around, actually. Why you say that? Because, example, your girl might not respect you again, man. Oh. That's true stories. Do you think so? I know so. Not from my own experience, but I just know. So would you say that it's not okay to kind of like express your pain? No, it is. You just got to know who you're doing it to. Like, if you was really going through some shit mm -hmm. and you're really going to break down, there's only certain people you could do that to that's going to really give you that shoulder that you need and not judge you on that. Like, you yeah, your partner should be that person. Yeah, 1,000%. Yeah. But it's... It's not, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? Like, like if they're not, it's not the worst because you can find not someone else like a woman, but you might just you know vent it out another way. Mm -hmm. But I believe the person closest to you should be your partner. You should be able to do that, yeah, without them. But that's a gamble, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I won't say they lose respect, but they, you know they might not. Like I, <laughs> I remember one time. Actually, I do remember a time that. Like, I remember one um one of my old Jews was like like saying like they was proud of me and that like, you get me. That actually almost brought me tears to my eyes, you know what I was there? Because it was just we don't talk to each other like that. You know what I was there? So I was like, ooh. And I remember I told some girl that like, well girl I was like seeing at the time and I was like, Yeah man, like shit man, that almost like brought tears to my eyes, like rah, rah, rah. I was just saying it calm. And then like maybe like three, four months later, she threw that in my face so fast. <laughs> I know, I swear to God, she's like, well, my man, he was crying about my I was like, whoa, like, did you really just say that? Like, you know what I was there? Yeah, this is so I know, you get me? And that wasn't even nothing, I just told her I cried. Mm -hmm. She didn't even see it, imagine she saw it. Like, you bitch, you crying and that. Like, man, you're such a proud, you're crying, you get it? Yeah. But to me, that was a genuine, sh you know what I'm trying to say? But that just let me know, you feel me? But we're cool though, you know that, but you did do that. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say, like, you know me. Nah, I disagree. Ah, uh, cool. So, what, what, which one would you say the, the worst kind of thing? <laughs> the one is internal. Yeah, emotional. emotional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, <laughs> that, that, that there, because that's what I'm trying to say, it's irritating. You just be having a normal day, you're trying to get on with your day, and you just can't get your mind right, because this, whatever's going on. Or even, like, the anxiety, bro. Like, from it, bro. Like, have you ever woke up knowing you gotta go and fight? You remember that feeling? It wasn't nice, was it? <laughs> like, that should make you wanna throw up. Like, yeah, the adrenaline. Like, that's what, nah. No. Yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't numb that. You can't, there's no medication for that. You feel me? There's nothing you could do. It's, just, it's a feeling you can't control. It goes and it goes. So, yeah, nah. Um, yeah, I disagree with um, physical pain being there, you know? I have never felt pain in a way. No, I disagree, man. Disagree? <laughs> I'm pretty cutthroat, though. I ain't gonna lie to you. But, yeah, I've, I've yeah. Mm? Yeah, I felt that shit before. All right. Disagree, man. Why do you say that? Because not experiencing it is, you might just be numb to it and just not, uh, it's like having a, something like physically wrong, you just don't notice it. Like, say like a certain pain when you like, just say whatever, you know some people got mad terminal illnesses and they just got a pain that they just, oh, yeah, they just live with. But it's a serious thing. You get me? Like, bro, you know what I told you? <laughs> you know what I will tell you? Bro, when my first heartbreak, I didn't even know I was going through it, brother. You get it? It's only so, like, later on in life, I reflect after talking to people about it. I was like, shit. I was heartbroken. You get me? But it's because I was in jail. You know what I was there? So when the girls left, for whatever reason, she moved moving funky. I didn't know that I was going, like, I didn't, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, I remember keep going to the phone, she's not picking up. I'm venting to the man then. Now when I know the symptoms, I'm like, shit, I was going through a heartbreak. But, how do I say it? It's like, I just didn't know it. So that wasn't good. Had I had known, I would have been able to maybe 
han nu findes der. Ja, jeg gør det. Hvad er det, du gør det? Because it takes a toll on you. Love takes a toll on you, fam. Because mm-hmm. people are got people that you love do stuff you don't like. You know what I'm saying? And you've got to sometimes make sacrifices for things <clears throat> and people that you love. That's a painful situation. Your mum might. Some people's mums are, you know, on drugs, mm-hmm. and they're smoking. But you still gotta love this. It's a painful situation to be in. What are you gonna do when your mom wake up? She saw the TV. Go charge it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I need my yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. But I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. If it's that situation, then <laughs> you get charge it, innit? Like, you know what I'm saying? The love is pain, man. Right. Anything you gotta make sacrifices for is pain. Agreed. Yeah, agreed, I am. Yeah. In every way. And that's what I was talking about earlier, like when I reflected on why I ended up in prison. Because my whole, before I was even born, you know, there was there. The certain families, not just me, but a family you're born into, you know. It might even not be in the best situation. Your mum and your dad, I don't know, I'm just saying, for anyone, even me, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm definitely a product of that. Starting off the interview, I asked you how did you find pain. Mm. Obviously, now we've discussed it a bit more. Would you still say it? Irritating. irritating? Yeah, as I was going through all of that yeah. stuff, I was thinking that shit was pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, same uh, irritating thing you can't explain, bro. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, cool. And the last one, on a scale of one to ten, how much pain would you say that you've experienced in your life? Ah. Oh. Uh. If I'm not going to say 10, yeah, bro. Yeah, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to say a 10, bro. I, have this, uh, I can tell you some more, but I've been in some situations where like, fuck, like, shit. Let's be, I'll say 9.5. 9.5. Yeah, yeah cool. See, that's a wrap.